whole world is celebrating Thanksgiving. Yes. And we are always thankful to the Lord this morning because um, it's gratitude is not a one-time event, but gratitude is an eternal event. Amen? And every day we need to be thankful unto the Lord because of His great goodness and His mercy for our lives. And you and I must know that God has got great things in store for the ones who believe in Him, who trust in Him, who depend on Him. And uh, I was so blessed this morning with the worship. Uh, when Priya was leading us, it really touched my heart. You know, the lady loses her job on Wednesday and Friday morning she can stand and praise the Lord. Amen. And you have come a long way. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, you know, what an amazing thing. You know, when you can come that far and come and say, yes, Lord, thank you. Everything worketh for good to them. Those who love the Lord and those who are called in accordance to His purpose. What better can it be? Amen. Praise God. When there are times of recession and then times, you know, where of redundancy in the world, that's the time that the church can come to a place and say, thank you, Lord. Because we know that our source is not the job, but our source is Yahweh. Amen. Our source is Jehovah Jireh, the provider, who provides us all our needs. Yes. If God cannot provide you a lamb through the market, He can provide you a lamb through the bush. Amen. 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 That lamb would be hiding in the bush and it will be available for you. So remember, if you are anticipating God to meet you at the point of your need, that need could be hiding in the bush. Yes. Don't go searching in the market. It could be hiding in different places and God knows how to beautifully provide for His people. Amen? Amen. I like that. You know why? Because, you know, the more we walk with the Lord, the more we taste of His goodness, we can always be joyful. We can always rejoice in knowing that our God knows our needs and our wants and our desires. Have you ever prayed for food in your table? No. Oh. Right? The food was there, given to you. Have you ever prayed that Lord give me another shirt? Right? There are, you know, abundance of apparel in your wardrobes that's falling over. And God has blessed you well. You know, you have not prayed for a shelter over your head. There are millions of people outside in the world that are sleeping on the streets. They eat from the garbage bin. Right? They are handicapped and they are destitute. They are displaced, but you aren't. You are in the shelter of the Most High God. Amen. Amen. And our God never fails. You know, that's the beautiful thing. You know, heaven and earth will pass away, but His word will never pass. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You know, so we have got that audacity Amen. to come into the presence of God and say, Yes, Lord, whether boot or no boot, we praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Whether we have a gift for Christmas or no, we will praise the Lord. Whether there is a job or no job, we will praise the Lord. Whether it's food or no food, we will praise the Lord. When we come with that attitude in the presence of God, God is well able to turn tables around for you. Amen. We are not the people who are governed by the world news. We are governed by heavenly news. Amen. Amen. The heavenly news says, whose report will you believe? Will you believe your doctor's report or will you believe your banker's report or will you believe the Wall Street report? If you depend on the worldly report that you will be depressed, you will be discouraged, the joy will vanish, there will be no smile on your faces because you are always looking down because that's an attitude of a swine that only looks down. Are you with me? Swine so only look down, they can't look up. If you look up, the Bible says, your redemption draweth near. Yes. Praise God. So the moment we lift up our eyes to heaven and say, God, you are in control no matter what happens. Lord, what God does is He opens the windows of heaven and showers the blessing upon you. Yes. Praise the Lord. So we can rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice that your moderation be made known unto all men. For the Lord is at hand. Praise 
praise the Lord. You know, so we can always rejoice in good times, in bad times, in ugly times, because everything is working for our good. Amen. Praise God, we believe that. Yes. Everything is working for our good. Yes. You know, there is a purpose and there is a, a process that we are going through. And when we go through the process, we come out refined, we come out blessed, we come out shining, we come out glorious in the presence of God. <laughs> Amen. And that's what Thanksgiving is all about. Yes. Praise God. Amen. You know, it's not that you have a million dollars in your pocket that you can thank the Lord. It is when you have nothing in your pocket and you have the courage to say thank you, Lord. That's the great glory in thanking God. In a man who has nothing but yet says praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. If you have everything, then you have no need of anything. Correct? Because your million dollars in your bank wall can always talk great things. But let me tell you the million dollars. I was listening to the AR and radio news. And they were saying there were the statistics going on about the, the happiness factor in the people. And they were, you know, coming on the radio and talking about it. The happiness factor is not how deep your bank balance is. The happiness factor is do you really know from where your joy comes? Amen. Who is your joy giver? You know, that's what the Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 17 and 11. The kingdom of God is within you. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost. And God is saying the kingdom of God is inside of you. He's within you. Praise the Lord. So you are not governed by the external factors. You are governed by the internal factor. And that matters to God. Amen. Because God is not interested in the external. God is interested in the internal. In the internal external will display the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So be encouraged this morning, this Thanksgiving day. You know, we have come to express gratitude to God and to one another and say, thank you, Lord, for the great family I have. Thank you, Lord, for the provision of my home. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of, of the finances. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, you have brought me to a large place. Lord, you have stepped me through. You have preserved me. You have protected me. Lord, you have, Lord, not allowed me to be ensnared by Satan. You have not allowed me, O Lord, to be bound by tradition. You have broken my chains. You have unfettered me, O Lord. The yoke has gone and I have replaced the yoke of iron with the yoke of Christ. Yes. Amen. 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 So we have replaced our yokes of long faces and replaced them with smiley faces. Amen. Come on, everyone smile. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to be happy. Right? Why? Because God will bless you. And therefore, the title of my word is, As for the season, a thankful heart. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Right? We all want to celebrate Thanksgiving. Yeah. There may be turkey today or maybe probably a chicken in your oven. Yeah. Or maybe a vegetarian diet. Or some of you may be fast. Yeah. Praise God. Nevertheless, we can thank the Lord. Amen. And bless His holy name. Amen. John Clayton said, Thanksgiving is a time when the world gets to see just how blessed and how workable the Christian system is. The emphasis is not on giving or buying, but on being thankful and expressing that appreciation to God and to one another. It's not about how much wealth you have. It's about, you know, the heart condition. It's about your attitude. Your attitude will define your altitude. How high you soar will all depend upon your attitudes. Praise God. Yes. You must know that God is very interested in the internal factor, into the internal caution. If that is renewed, if that is changed, you will automatically are setting yourself for success. Remember that if you are not internally being changed, there is something wrong. You can put the best of the makeup, but people can still see between your eyes and inside of your eye that you are sorrowful and you are sad and there is no joy in the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Yes. You can wear the best perfume, but still the stench can come out. Yes. And let me tell you that if God is not your aroma, then nothing of this world can give you the aroma. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. You are the sweet smelling aroma of Jesus Christ. You are like Jesus Christ. You are the representative. You are the son and the daughter of the most high God. You are the mirror of God. And God is expecting you to reflect the glory of God and emit the glory of God through your life 
and through my life because the world is waiting. Yes. World is waiting. Outside is turmoil. Outside is pain. Outside is chaos. Outside is sorrow. Outside is you know you know things that will bring you down. But inside the house of God, under the covering of the Holy Ghost, under the covering of the of the Lord God Almighty, we are blessed. We are provided for. We are protected. And God sees that. Henry Ward Beecher says, Pride slays thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes. What it does? Pride slays thanksgiving. But a humble mind is the soil out of which thanks naturally grows. A proud man is seldom a grateful man, for he never thinks he gets as much as he deserves. Wow, are you grateful for what you have right now? Yes. If you're not grateful for what you have right now, more will not be added to you. Yes. <laughs> Come on, yes. I said something. If you're grateful for what you have right now, then Lord will see that attitude of your heart and will allow extra dose of blessing to come upon you. Yes. We all desire blessings. A lot of time we run out of blessings. A lot of time we will compromise our living and a lifestyle for the blessing and we forget from where it comes. Yes. Because the blessing becomes our God. The blesser has been neglected and blessing becomes our God. And then we start bless, you know, worshipping our blessing and that becomes our idol. And so God is always shaking your heart that once I have blessed you where your heart is, once I have prospered you where your heart is, once I have healed you where your heart is, once I have delivered you where your heart is, is your heart in the right place to say thank you to the Lord? Are you committed to thank the Lord all the time? One of the great encouragements to believers is found in the Apostle Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. And this letter gives us a great example for how we should conduct our life today. It is important that we keep this letter in mind to the surroundings from where Paul was writing. We must know that. Paul was in the Roman jail. He was in the prison. He was in stocks and bombs. He was in chains when he was writing this letter to the free church outside. And he writes a beautiful letter in Philippians 4, 4 to 9. He says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Come on. He's writing to the church that is free. From where is he writing? He's writing from the dungeon. He's writing from the prison. He's writing where there was no freedom. But he's writing to the church that is living in freedom. And a lot of time we hear the message of the freedom, but we don't enjoy true freedom that comes forth from knowing God. What is freedom? What is the definition of freedom? Definition of freedom is not what we want to do, but what we ought to do. That's real freedom. Right? A democratic nation can provide you the benefits of freedom, but that freedom doesn't give you the license what you want to do, but that freedom in a democratic process is what you must do, what you ought to do, what is right to do. Yes. That is a choice that we must make. And that is why the discretion comes in play, discernment comes in play, moral judgment comes in play, and we make the right choices so that we will not abuse the freedom that we have received in a free nation. Yes. That is what happens in a free world of the kingdom of Christ, that there is one king, there is one chief of the army, there is one captain of the army, and we walk in submission to the plans and the rules of the kingdom. Within the boundary, there is freedom. Outside the boundary, there is destruction. There is an accident waiting. There is a serpent waiting to bite you. Within the boundary, there is provision. Within the boundary, there is freedom. Why? Because the word of God is a boundary. The kingdom of God is a boundary. The precepts of God is a boundary. And within that boundary, there is freedom. There is liberty for we to understand that we can enjoy within the context of the boundary. Yes. It helps us. So what this man is saying, he's writing to the free church. The free church is 
not rejoicing, but he is in a state of rejoicing. Why and how in prison? Come on. He is rejoicing in his prison, but he's writing the church to rejoice that is free, that is allowed to worship God, that has the church to pray for, that has the church to stand in the gap for. Are you with me? Today we can be in a similar condition. We are a free church, we have a freedom to worship, we have a time to rejoice, but yet we are sorrowful, yet we are downpressed, yes we are downtrodden, and we don't know how to rejoice. And the man in prison is writing to you and me, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing. And I've highlighted the word anxious for nothing. And we are going to ponder on these words. Right? For nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, the Bible says. There is a process for you to enjoy the peace. There is a process for you to come to a place of enlargement. There's a process for you when you adhere by what the instructions was given by a man in the prison to the church that is free outside will help you understand to enjoy the freedom that he can still enjoy though being in prison. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And that is a powerful statement. You know why he being in the prison is living as a free man and writing the time to rejoice to the free church outside. And the church must rejoice because of what the Lord has done. Amen. So he says, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. There's a formula emerging. There's a methodology of the spirit emerging. If you want to come to a place of peace. And the kingdom of God that is residing in you has to be come out from that cell. And can be made evident to the world outside. So what is he saying? Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God. Which surpasses all understanding. Will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Finally brethren. Whatever things are true. Whatever things are noble. Whatever things are just. Whatever things are pure. Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are good. If there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. First it's coming to a place of peace and then sustaining the peace. Come on. A lot of times we say, oh, we have the goosebump of the Holy Spirit. We are very late, very happy. Praise God. After what the presence of God came down. I was slain from all sides, glory filled my life, and I was rejoicing. Now, after two days, you ask, Pastor, can you please pray for me? And Friday, you were very excited. What happened on Sunday? What happened on Monday? Why didn't you sustain the peace level? What happened to that level of peace that came down? Why were you anxious? Why were you perturbed? Why were you disturbed? Is a question Paul is asking to the church that is free, that is to you and to me, that is walking in freedom. Just 1,000 kilometers away, there is no freedom, brothers, to worship the Lord. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. But we are privileged people. Yes. And we need to take that advantage yes. and run faster with God and run walk with God. Say, God, I will be with you and fellowship with your people and bless the name of Jesus. Yes. That's where you have called us to be. So he says, the things which you have learned and received and heard. Learned, received and heard. And Romans 10, 17 says, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But here the process is reversed. You are progressing. At 10, 17 you are receiving faith. At 10, 17 you are a, a student. But now he's talking to a mature church. He says that what you have done what? Now you have which you learned and received and heard and saw in me these do and the God of peace will be with you. Yes. So that means he's saying that the baby stage of milk feeding
being Christians is over. I have trained you. I have given you the instructions. And you are my good students. You have learned it. You have received it. You have heard it. Heard is third. And you have seen it in me. Emulate it. Imitate it. And follow it. Lo and behold, God will be with you. And he will grant you peace. Isn't that amazing? It's a whole reversal. No more yelling and the faith comes. Now those are elementary teachings. We need to progress to the next level and say, God, here am I and bless me. Lord, make me season, make me mature, deeply rooted and grounded in your word. Then out of all these years of learning and teaching and seeing, Lord, I want to be so steadfast like a tree that will never be uprooted. No matter what storms come. Uh, those who are planted in the house of God shall flourish in the course of the Lord. That's the secret. That's what the psalmist said. Those who are planted in the house of God will be so strong because storms will come. Hello? Whoever told you following Christ, storms will not come. If somebody told you that storms will not come, that was a false teaching and preaching. Because storms will certainly come and we must be prepared. And if our roots are not going deep down, we will not be able to stand straight and stand firm. That's why many people fall. Because wrong wind of doctrine, wrong teaching, wrong publicity, wrong prophets, false teachers, deceivers, defrauders, they come in and they destroy your perspective of Christ. Why? Because you have not come to a place where you are, you know, you are deep down. Have you seen a bamboo tree? Bamboo tree. Yes. Have you seen bamboo? Yes. You know what happens with bamboo is that when you sow the bamboo, you'll never see it come up for the next two, three years. Yes. Bamboo, the roots will be going deep down and all of a sudden, within a year's time, bamboo will be about 15 feet high. All of a sudden it shoots up. You know why it shoots up? Because as high the bamboo you see, that root has first gone down deep, then you see the structure up. Today we are interested to make the structure up, but never allowing our root system to go, go so deep in the Lord. If the foundations are destroyed, what can one man do? Are you with me? My question to you is, if your foundations are not right, how will you build a building? Come on. Your building of a building as tall as possible is only dependent on how deep and how strong your foundation is. And if your foundation is robust in Christ and you are deep in the Lord, right? And you have tertiary roots going wide in the world and deep in the world, then no matter what storms come, you will be able to face it and attack. If you see casualties in the kingdom of God is because it's all love and glory on the surface. All grace on the surface. Oh. You must go deep down into the word. And the word will teach you what you are called to do. So he's saying rejoice in the Lord always. Regardless of what life throws at us. Our attitude in life should be one of rejoicing. It's the one that we know Jesus Christ. And what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us. Praise the Lord. If you know that Jesus has rescued you. If you know that Jesus has shed his blood for you. If he has not kept his son but gave him unto you. How much more will he not give all things for you? Yes. So that should eliminate every form of doubt. Every form of sorrow. Every form of long face. Every form of disregard to the word of God. But you will be happy and rejoicing because you know that God will meet you at the point of your need. Yes. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the statistics of the world say. It doesn't matter what the world system says. What the newspapers say. It matters what the Holy Word says. Yes. Right? So let's understand when Paul is talking about the word rejoice. And he repeats himself. Again I said rejoice. The word rejoice comes from the Greek word kairo. It's a primary word connoting an attitude of cheerfulness, happiness, and joy. Right? Have you seen people always smiling? 
Have you seen people always happy? Have you seen people always having a pre good predisposition to life? Amen. Right? Their hearts are happy. They are grateful people. They are thankful people. They know from where the Lord has brought them and, and taken them. So if there are little valleys or if there are little potholes in your journey with God, it doesn't disrupt their peace. It doesn't disrupt their happiness. They know that they are trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. There will be hills and there will be valleys and there will be potholes. There will be roadblocks. Our roadblocks in our journey will only help us to slow down and cross over. Yes. Praise the Lord. That's why the roadblocks and the speed breakers are. Are you with me? Yes. We are, you know, sometimes we sit on the horse and we say our horse should gallop as fast as possible without any impediment. No, 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 no. The journey to heaven is full of impediments. Come on. The journey to heaven is a narrow journey. It's a narrow path. It's got, you know, uh, enemies all around. There are deep ravines. And if you look down, fear will grip your heart. But as long as you're walking with your Savior, I assure you that He will make you through and help you through and help you to overcome every impediment that you see in the journey. But you must be with the Lord. If you are outside His coverage, Praise the Lord. What happens? Huh? You'll be either frozen with fear. Many Christians are on the journey of faith but frozen with fear. Because God has moved forward or probably God has not reached where you have reached. And you looked around and you saw Jesus nowhere. And when you looked at the river and you said, oh my gosh. One step missed and I would have fallen into that. That's why many Christians today are frozen with fear in the journey to heaven. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Cry out, Lord, where are you? Are you behind your head? Many people don't know where he is. Because in your journey of your faith, you want to gallop so fast that you don't want to stay put and evaluate and see how you're heading. Is the Lord with you in your walk? So we need to understand what Cairo means that you are always joyful, always happy because you know that you have to be. Now, in today's economy and the conditions, you may find it hard to rejoice when you have lost your home, when you have lost your job, are you with me? When you have lost your finances, it's very hard to be joyful. It's very hard to smile and say, all is well with my soul. You may sing all this well with my soul from your coconut, but your heart is still thinking how to pay the next bill. Are you with me? You don't have any provision to go back home. If somebody doesn't give you a lift in his car, you don't know how to reach home probably. You'll take 11 number bus and reach home. That may be your situation and condition in this time of recessed economy. But let me tell you, the question comes, how we will be happy? And that's what we are going to study. Alright? The Bible further down says, how we are going to have victory over the situations we find ourselves entangled in. If I may ask each and every one of you, somebody or each, almost everybody must be going through certain scenarios of life that is an impediment. Come on, be honest. There is a roadblock. Everyone, including you and me, your pastor is not bereft of it. Come on, I said something. You may be going through your hidden time or you may be going through valley time, but we all are going through difficult time. And if there are difficulties attached to our journey, then how do we choose to rejoice in that difficult times? We must know that. And we are going to understand that through the Bible. The Paul is writing, be anxious for nothing. The word anxious is translated from the Greek word merinam. The word projects the idea of being distracted from what we should really be thinking. Uh-huh. What happens? The job goes, your mind is on the job. And until the job was there, you were very happy. But now all of a sudden that comfort factor is removed. What happened? Oh, Pastor, from where will I get my next job? Everywhere there is a recession. Right? Your manager is in trouble. Oh, Pastor, where will I get my next wife? Next wife not allowed. 
<laughs> so if you come to pastor for wrong advice, he can't give you. Are you with me? So you have to make it out, you have to work it out, you have to repent of your sin, get reconciled, restored and work it out. Yes. Come on. Right? Yes. So what happens is that we are coming to a place that we are anxious. The word anxious is that certain elements in the periphery that is directly affecting your situation and your circumstance is distracting your thought process. All along you had thoughts of peace. All along you had thoughts that was governed by the Holy Spirit. But this circumstantial evidence which is adverse to you, contrary to you, has distracted you from right thinking. Are you with me? Yes. That is why Paul is saying, what is saying? It actually means to draw in a different direction, to distract. Hence, it signifies that which causes us to change our correct thinking to the one of anxious care. That is what it means. Anxious care. So instead of having peaceful thoughts, our thoughts are anxiety. Instead of blood pressure being 120 over 80, the moment you are worried, your BP is going up. When the BP goes up, you running to the God instead, you're running to the doctor. Doctor gives you additional tablet at the cost of your financial lack. Yes. Correct? Uh, I was reading a small story of Thanksgiving. You know, a man lived 70 years, very healthy, very nice. And all of a sudden, right, what happened? He had problems, you know, passing water. So he went to the doctor and he, the doctor after treating him his kidney problem, this problem, that problem, right, gave him a big bill. So when he got the big bill of the hospital, he started to cry. So the doctor came to him, sir, is everything okay with you now? At least your kidney is working, you know, you can pass water comfortably. He said, no, no, I'm not crying because of the bill, I'm crying. For 70 years I had free flow of water and I never thank the Lord, really thankful to God. For 70 years he did not give me a single bill. <laughs> it was flowing freely. But I came to the hospital for one treatment, you gave me such a big, big fat bill. My dear brothers and sisters, a lot of time we are in that position. When we go to the doctor, then we realize the blessings of God. That's why there's a beautiful song. What's it? Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, name them. See what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. You know that song better than you know. So please count your blessings. Write it down. Write down. You may take one paper, fold it in between, write your blessings and write your curses. And you see your blessings will overtake so much that you'll be overwhelmed. You'll start crying with tears and say, God, I thank you, Lord. Same grind. Yes. 
of anxious thoughts, fearful thoughts. Right? But God is calling us to be delivered from anxiety, from worry. Right? So the question is, how can we be not anxious when there is no food on my table? How can I not be anxious when there is no job to provide me my finances? How can I not be anxious when I'm fighting a terminal disease? Now these are very logical questions that we must encounter and we must face for us to overcome the hindrance that we are facing today of living a life of God. Right? So we must see what God is calling us to do. Paul gives us the answer. What is Paul saying? In everything by prayer and supplication. Prayer plus supplication plus thanksgiving. Okay? You must make your request known to God. Now we ponder on this aspect of the answer. You all want answers or not? How want to be anxious? Yes, I want to. Yes. Come on, we'll go through the perilous times are coming, not good times. Yes. Hello, I said something. I'm saying from the Bible, Peter says, perilous times are coming. If you're thinking glorious and rosy times are coming, you are living in oblivion. Perilous times are coming. If perilous times are coming, that means anxiety level will go up. That means BP levels will go up. You will have problem with your system. You will have problem standing for your faith. Persecution is coming. So how will you stand? steadfast in your faith in spite of is a question so he says here in everything connotes there is no exception to which this will not work regardless of what we are going through prayer with thanksgiving will work i said no. prayer with thanksgiving will hello have you said thank you to your spouse are you grumbling, complaining, mumbling? Always finding faults. Huh? When you married me, then I thought Chapati was on the map of India. Now somehow it is coming to the shape. Till after all these 30 years of marriage, it is still not in shape. Sometimes it goes awry. Yeah? Have you thanked the Lord for your spouse? Have you thanked the Lord for your parents? Have you thanked the Lord for the finance? Have you thanked the Lord for food on your table? The moment food comes, you know, my dog also waits to say grace. Man. But we Christians can't say grace when we jump on the food. Are you with me? Yes. Come on. So we need to be grateful to the Lord. Aren't you grateful for your company that you work with? Are you grateful for the Christian bosses that you have? Or probably a terrible boss over your head? And you have said, thank you Lord for that terrible Pharaoh that is sitting over your head and breathing fire on your neck. Hello? Thank the Lord for the authority. Even an authority like Pharaoh, there is order in the organization. If there was no Pharaoh, there was no provision. So God sometimes brings Pharaohs in your life so that your character will be refined. He's interested in you, not in the Pharaoh. Pharaoh will ultimately drown in the Red Sea. But what about you? You will come out on the other side. Because the initial extravagance of worship, there was complaining and grumbling. Within 40 days, yeah. where is my garlic? Where is my onion? Where is my quail and my dove and my duck? Yeah. Come on! Where is my biryani and kebab and gunpowder? So when I go to the Holy Land, I can't eat the food of that place. <laughs>
or lying on your bed or sitting on a chair right that's how you can pray but the word supplicate actually means go down on your knees earnestly beseech that means like a slave you will humble yourself go down on your knees and you will supplicate and you will beseech with earnestness in your spirit so he said pray and supplicate without thanksgiving right yes. that's what he said okay that is it what is the difference between prayer is a petition to God it defines our need and should be in accordance with what God has said he will supply what God has said he will supply roti kapla maka hello right bread clothing shelter he said that's your need I'll provide once you are grateful in the time when your needs are met then I will think about your wants hello yes. see there is an order in God's kingdom yes. sometimes we say we quote wrongly right we reverse we say desire want and needs no 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 God first meets your needs if you the covenant he has provided you that I am going to take care of your food your clothing your shelter then he has given it to you yes or no yes, yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Haven't you got yes or no? Yes. Come on. Yes. All right. So he said, I will provide your needs. And it should be in accordance to what he will supply. Requesting things that are not part of our covenant are useless. I said something. If you are requesting things that are not part of God's covenant, you are asking out of context. And that is why your prayers, which are out of context, will never be answered yes. and never be honored. Yes. Hello, Pastor, how do you say what is within the context? Go and read the Bible. What is in the context? Alright? So for example, right? When I say God is not going to honor that request that is out of His covenant. Right? And God makes a covenant. Within the covenant, there are parameters and there are things that He has provided in the covenant. Yes. So we should know what God is providing in the covenant and ask within the framework of covenant, God will honor it and God will instantly answer it. Right? So, the examples are, why will God not honor? If we are asking God to give us someone else's job. <laughs> Alright? Are we coveting someone else's house? Are you envious of what others possess? God will never ask. God will never bless envy. God will never bless jealousy. Hello? Owners envy, neighbors pride only does for them. Right? So God will never provide something that you are asking out of context because you are not happy with what you have but you are trying to hire your boss's position. And you saying, God, knock him off, promote me. <laughs> Hello? You have not submitted to the boss but you are asking the boss to be knocked off. So that you can you are eyeing his chair, you are eyeing his position. God will never answer that prayer. And that will lead you and keep you in frustration till you realize that God will not answer the prayer which is out of the covenant. God's covenant is pure and holy. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. So you first be happy and first have an attitude of great gratitude. Now, under this pause, then God through your pause will elevate you. Now, for example, you are saying, you know, and I wish, I wish, you know, how beautiful that house is. I will want to have it. Right? Never have it. Never have it. Why are you envy? Right? Sometimes the women are lying. What beautiful, nice, pinterized skin wearing. <laughs> earrings. You see? My wife is wearing earrings like that. It's a cage here actually. Crap word on it. <laughs> so the girls will run high. Mr. Arlene, what beautiful earrings. 
right? And you are I mean, you are wearing diamond ones, but you are you know eyeing the brass ones that she's wearing. <laughs> are you with me? Sometimes we can be so foolish. So we must understand if you are envying somebody else's property and praying for that, you are praying amiss. You are not praying within the covenant of God. You must know that. You must know that. So that is why that doesn't get answered. Now I'll substantiate it with the word of God. Open with me the book of Mark chapter 4, 18 to 20. They are Jesus' words. And others are the ones on whom seed was sown among the thorns. These are the ones who have heard the word. Okay? These are the ones who have heard the word. But the worries of the word. See? You are hearing the word from your ears. But the worries are in your heart. That is why out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. It doesn't say out of the abundance of the hearing the mouth speaking. Remember that. So either you take the word and you know it can go through what pastor preached. Or you can take the word and redirect it to your heart. So what is going to happen is in times of your trial, the word will come. You will be grateful. Lord, you have provided for me. I'm thankful to you. That's why the case of Engeli for David was, even he could not go out. He said, Lord, I thank you. In his tunnel, in his cave, he could not see the light, but he could reflect back and see Hallelujah. the goodness of God and worship. Amen. And the Lord. Amen. In his cave. Are you with So Jesus is saying, the worries of the world and the deceitfulness of riches. The pyramid scheme, the get quick rich scheme, right? So deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word. Yeah. Once only Friday you come to hear the word. All of the seven days, six days of the week you are hearing worldly things. So what is happening is, it's choking the word. Chokes the word. And the Bible clearly says, and it becomes unfruitful. So when you set your affection on the things below and you ask in contradiction to the covenant, your prayer will not be answered. Hello? But if you set your things eyes above and you focus on the covenant blessings of God and you ask within the covenantal blessing that has been promised, you will receive what you are asking. Amen? Now let's understand further that. Let us not be distracted by what the world has. Because Jesus said it is unfruitful. Again I repeat. Don't get distracted with what the world has. Because Jesus clearly said it is deceitful. And but let us instead stay focused on what God has promised. That's why we sing that song right. Standing on the promises of God my day. Right? You remember that song? Grandfather's night. Huh? So we stand on the promises of God. So the translation goes further and uses the word supplication. And I find it interesting that why this word in Greek Paul is using again. And this word is thesis. Is often used or translated as prayer. So this raises the question as to why would he tell us in everything by prayer and prayer and I put it supplication. Why would Paul use prayer and prayer? King James Version says supplication, supplicate. Right? Now I'm going to explain to you why with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God. Right? When we consider the small word and prayer and supplication we find that it comes from the Greek word kahi. Right? And Strong defines this little word as a primary particle having a copulative and sometimes also a cumulative force. Thus, kahi can mean and also both, but, even, for, if, or, so, that, with, then, therefore, when, or yet. Can you imagine one small word in the way? 
It can mean all of this. Right? So with this understanding, we can read the passage as in everything by both prayer. Prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, how often do we pray and make our needs known? Every time say, Lord, give me this, Lord, give me that. How many pray? Yes. We all pray. I also pray sometimes. Same prayer. Lord, give me this, bless me, more business, more people, grow the church, increase the class the territory. But then the other time I say, Lord, grow the church, the Lord is saying, have you thanked Samuel for me? The people I've given you, the church I've given you, have you thanked me for that? I got a shock. I started praying. Other prayer, Lord, I thank you for the people that you have And the growth that you're going to give me, I thank you for that also. Yeah. Praise the Lord. A lot of times what we have, we forget to thank the Lord. But we are looking for something that is in the future will happen, but we are not grateful to what you have now, the future will never happen. Yeah. Yes. I said something. Yes. You must pay attention. Right? So we must thank the Lord for what we have now so that what is there in the future will also be appropriated by the eyes of faith. And we will understand that. Right? So, we need to give thanks uh, for the results before we see it physically Amen. manifested. Hallelujah. From today onwards, we are going to pray a different prayer. Okay? What we are going to pray? If you are in pain, you say, Lord, thank you for healing. Hallelujah. Amen. If you have no job, you say, Lord, thank you for giving me a job. Amen. Thank you for the job that you are providing. Amen. Come on. Amen. Now we are going to pray a different prayer. Yes. And I am going to substantiate it to you. Why? You must know that. Why? And how? And how did Jesus himself pray? Now, is it not what faith is defined? Faith believes that it receives before it is seen by the physical eye. Yes. Hello? Yes. All faith? Friend of people? Isn't that the definition of faith? What is the definition of faith? Somebody from behind. What is the definition of faith? Okay? Good. We are learned people. Yes, sir. Thank you. So what does faith? Faith believes that it receives before it has seen the end result. Yes. Have you seen your job? Have you seen your spouse? Have you seen your future? Start thanking the Lord now. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Is this not how faith is defined in Hebrews 11, 1 to 4? Let's see it. Now faith is the assurance. Faith is an achiever. Hope is a waiter. Hello? You want to be in an achiever's list or a waiter's list? Achiever. Achiever. Come on. Achiever. So Bible says now faith is that means in the now you can receive what you have asked for. Praise Lord. You can hope for the Lord and unto the Lord for the coming of Jesus. I am also hoping for the coming of the Lord. I'm waiting for it. But where the covenantal promise is concerned, I don't have to wait. I need to receive in my spirit before I can see it happen. Amen. The moment I receive in my spirit, everything externally will start functioning Amen. and you will see the wealth of the sinners being transferred. Amen. That is why you must receive it internally. It is an internal factor that God is entrusted in. Right? So let's go further down. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. For by it the men of old gained the approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God. So what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. Hello. <laughs> by faith the whole world was made. And if you say you are a man of faith and a woman of faith, you must see your world made by the power of faith. In the name of Jesus. Right? I'll see a great example. Found by Jesus in John chapter 11 verses 38 to 44. 
So Jesus, again being deeply moved within, came to the tomb and now it was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, remove the stone. Martha, the sister of the deceased, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Amen. Come on. Every promise of God is conditional. If you believe, will you not see the glory of God? Yes, Lord, I believe. So what happened? Huh? Then Jesus raised his eyes, so they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said what? Father, come on say it. Father, I thank you. For you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But because of these people standing around, I said it so that they may believe that you said it. Come on, how Jesus pray? Thank you. Are Wasn't that faith? Yes. yes, sir. Jesus was all in humanity. Jesus did not do any miracle, but he knew that God was not with him. Amen. Amen. Yes. Jesus could not raise the dead. Jesus could not open the blind eyes. Jesus could not make the lame man to walk. But he knew. And how is he approaching God? Thank you. How is Jesus mode of prayer? Before you could see the manifestation of your miracle, you better become grateful. Amen. Hello? Before you see the manifestation of your miracle, you must be grateful. Jesus did not see when he said thank you, Lazarus did not come up. Lazarus was still lying dead. Come on, he's at the tomb. Everyone's eyes is on Jesus. What is going to do? And he's saying thank you Lord. Thank you, Lord. You hear me. Is that prayer you pray? Are you bring that dead man in the name of Jesus? I command you, dead man, rise. You break your head, you walk on your head. The hair pulling and pushing ministry, and you do everything to carve the dead out and bring life inside of him. And you jump on him and do this and do that. Have you seen those things? <laughs> but Jesus never did all these things. If you want to cast out demon, learn from Jesus. If you want to raise the dead, learn from Jesus. Tomorrow if you want to raise the dead and you are called in a tombstone, learn from Jesus. What is he saying? Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Yes. Past tense. Heard me? Yes. When did Jesus pray? When we pray in time, Ruha, Lama, Sheikh, Lama, Lama, You know when, when the biggest miracle has to happen, you pray more in time, right? You pray in time, Steve. No, 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 no. He said, Father, I thank you. And then he says, what he said, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice. When he approached God, there was grace, there was reverence, there was glory, there was poise. Poignantly, he approached the presence. Father, I thank you. Respect. The tone of voice, the attitude was the attitude of gratefulness. And what he saying? Huh? After he has prayed that prayer, then he says, then he cried out. What he says, Lazarus, come forth. And what happened? The man who had died came forth, bound hand, foot with wrappings, and his face was wrapped around with a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. We should take note that Jesus thanked the Father before the miracle was manifested and witnessed by all. Are you thanking the Lord? before you see the miracle. Yes. Or every time you're fasting and praying to see the miracle. Hello? What is your attitude? Oh, oh. I am praying. Tears are flowing. Sometimes there are things that happen with tears of the I'm not against tears for it. With all you receive. Oh Lord, you know, so much of headache is happening. I've taken two panicles three times a day. And I've taken an idea to the oh, Lord. <coughs> And you're casting the spirit of heaviness, the demons, the coming affliction. Right? And you're calling the pastor, calling the life leader, making his life also miserable. 
Casting all your cares instead of Christ to calm the pastor. Or on your life leader or on your brother. Are brother, we need to be trained how to pray. Pray in accordance to God's word. Thank the Lord, Lord, I thank you. Lord, that by your wounds I am healed. I know this headache will go in Jesus' name. It has gone. Okay, how it has gone, let's see. Jesus had no doubt as to what was about to take place. He knew the faithfulness of the Father. Come on. Jesus knew the faithfulness of the Father. This was faith in action. Should we believe no less? When we become born again, we entered into a covenant relationship with God. Under the terms of this covenant, God has promised to meet all our need according to His riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amen. Come on. All our need. All our need will be provided. I have no doubt that God will not take care of it. He took care of my grandfather. He took care of my father. Hey, he will take care right now. He has taken care of me for all these years. I will not tell you my age. <laughs> and he will take care of me for another X number of years as long as I am going to live on this earth. The good things. He satisfied my heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. So if God has promised, do we doubt that he will fulfill his commitment? Come on, answer to me. If God has promised, do we still doubt that God will really keep his word? Huh? Therefore, faith does not doubt, but rather believes and receives at the time of request. It receives at the time of? Let's see Matthew 21, 21 to 22. Jesus is reinforcing the truth. Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but also, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Amen. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive, and I put the word, the Greek word, labano. There's a little wrong translation here. It says, you will receive. That means future tense. That means, when you are thanking the Lord now, you will receive it, don't know when. But somewhere in the future you will receive it. But that's not what the word Lambano actually means. So if I have to rephrase this word, correct me in per, in per, as for Greek translation, it will see that the light is slight, you know, change. Lambano actually connotes the idea of someone seizing, taking hold of or attaining what is offered. Hello, what is offered? That means God has already offered you the gift and you have held it. Yes. God has already given you the gift of healing, you have held it. Yes. That means once you are healed, you are made whole for life. Yes. Come on. Yes. Once you are healed, you say, Lord, I am delivered from cancer, I am delivered from TB, I am delivered from alcoholism, I am delivered from bone disease, I am delivered from osteoporosis, I yes. am delivered from blood pressure, I am delivered from, uh, from diabetes. Yes. And I will hold it. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. So what happening is, God has given you the gift. You're holding the gift in your hand. And the moment, and the, as long as you keep seizing it, holding it, healing will be evident. Instantly, and also spontaneously, and also simultaneously. I said that. So that means, you have received your healing. You're healed today, you're healed tomorrow, and for eternity, that disease will not hold you. Why? Because the healing you have got the gift of salvation you have held it. Yes. So, what is the common blessing that you and I have received? Health, wealth, wisdom, vitality, safety, preservation, protection. Amen? Amen. All these things we have received. So, it says that therefore this passage can be translated as whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you take hold of it. I put that. You take hold of it. That means, Lord, I thank you for the job and I'm holding my job right now. Lord, I thank you for the baby that you're giving me and I'm holding the baby right now. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the spouse that you're giving me and I'm holding the spouse right now. Are you with me? Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the business that you're giving me and I'm holding that business right now. 
Lord, I thank you for the wealth transfer that is happening to me. And Lord, that transfer I can see is happening right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, that you will bless me and you will enlarge my territory and you will increase my border in the name of Jesus. I don't care what the world is saying. I do care what God says concerning my future. Amen. I do care what God says concerning my life. I don't care what the world says concerning me. I do care what God says concerning me, concerning my current scenario, concerning my future scenario, concerning my marriage, my children, my everything that God has given me. But I have to be grateful. So this leads us to a question for what you are believing. Is it something? Is it something? Jesus has provided through his new covenant. If so, the provision is there. Amen. Hallelujah. The provision may not be in the marketplace. Probably you have climbed up the hill without the provision. But God is well able to provide it in the ticket. Amen. And in the bush. Hallelujah. And you must lay down your eyes. Yeah. And say, Lord, here am I. I believe and I have trusted in you. Lord, after so many years of waiting, you opened my wife's womb. With my logic, I produced a smile, but with the blessing, I produced Isaac. If now you want me to put Isaac on the altar, so it be, Lord, because I know you can provide. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so what God said, it was imputed to him as righteousness. Yes. Abraham's faith was imputed to him as righteousness. Right standing with God. Is your faith justifying you before God and saying you are righteous because of the actions that you have done concerning your faith? I gave you a command. Have you obeyed? Praise the Lord. Yeah. So it's very important that we understand that. Yeah. We need to ask and take hold of what God has provided. Then offer true thanksgiving from a grateful heart. A heart that knows God has heard and has fulfilled His promise. Amen. Amen. So this Thanksgiving, I want you to pray a different prayer. Amen. Right? Yes. I want you to pray and say, thank you Lord, you're holding your blessing in your hand. Amen. Come on. Yes. You're holding your blessing in your hand. Yes. Are you with me? You say, Pastor, it can't be happening. It cannot happen. No, no, no. You will shut those doubtful thoughts from your life. You will take out those unbelief from your system. And if God has said yes, then you will say yes. If God has said done, you will say yes or done. Amen. Amen. Let's all arise in the presence of God. Let's start praying. Shela Mata. You will pray the prayer. A different prayer, I say. Hallelujah. You will no longer ask. You ask enough. Ask enough. Now is the time that you will thank the Lord for what you have asked. Believing that we have received. And God will bless you. Shela Mahdi Come on, church. Let's pray. Let's pray. Every one of us. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Come on. Lela Mandarukhuna Mashed. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is saying, I love you. I care for you. I died for you on the cross of Calvary. God's word says, if God did not spare his only son, he gave him for you. How much more will he not give you all things freely in him? Everything he will give to you. Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. All these things will be added unto you. This is the promise of his word. And because of the covenant, we are the recipients. We need the big one, the great one, the glorious one to keep the covenant alive. The great one, the big one, the wonderful one is your Yeshua the Messiah. Is your Yahweh. The stronger one in a covenant relationship is for your son. And on your side, if he's on your side, who can be against you? No one. No one, sir. If God be for you, who can be against you? So this morning I encourage you, church. I encourage you this Thanksgiving season. I'm the Lord. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my wife. Thank you for my husband. Thank you for my children. Thank you, Lord, for my 
my marriage. Thank you for the job. Thank you for the business. Thank you, Lord, for the finances. Thank you, Lord, for the food that you provide. Lord, thank you. I bless you. I worship you. I adore you. Come on, start worshiping God. Come on, start opening your mouth. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord of my soul and forget not all of His benefits. Forget not all of His benefits. His benefits are so huge that you cannot even count them. His benefits are innumerable, uncountable, priceless, freely given to you and to me. He forgives me of all my sin and He heals me of all my diseases. He redeems my life from the pit, from destruction. He has protected you from destruction. Many people around you are dying. There are many road accidents. There are fire in the building. People have lost the living. But you are protected. You are redeemed. You are provided for. You did not lack. You probably read in the paper. Or somebody told you in the news. You were not affected. That's why he says he redeems your life from destruction. From the pit. Then he says that he crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. God has put a crown on your head. That spiritual crown. When you wear and walk the demon's bow. Satan bows. He shudders. He trembles. He bows. Because he sees you as a prince of God. As a princess of God. He bows before you. He trembles. He may strike the vision, but he cannot strike you. He sees the glory of God in you. You don't see it, but he sees it. Every dark power sees the glory of God inside of you. Every dark power surrenders when he sees you ride your car in the streets of the wild. That's what he says. I've crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercy. I feed your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like that of an eagle. Come on. That's the heritage. And that's what David is saying. Bless the Lord of my soul. 
the wine the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Verse 18 says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and He will make my feet like hinds feet, and He will make me to walk upon my high places. This is what Habakkuk says. Father, we want to say thank you for this thing. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Lord, we want to say thank you. Because you became poor, so that we can become rich in you. You are naked, so that our unity will be covered. You shed the blood on the cross, so that our sins will be forgiven. That by the 39 stripes of Jesus, we were healed. And today, we receive our healing corporately in our bodies, in our minds, in the name of Jesus. Come on, receive your healing in Jesus' name. Wherever you are, receive it in your spirit. It's the eternal factor. Receive it in your spirit.